Jesus, well, here we are again online this Wednesday as we approach the end of the month. We thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. We give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. We give thanks. Halabashi karabalde ande. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Mikadastu prigidia. We give thanks for all men. We give thanks for those that are in authority. We give thanks for your gracious, tender mercies. Le mosikeliasta. For life and breath and all things. We give you thanks. Le porushte le mande rikasaya. 
Vlendo reze mane la manstia. Yes, we give thanks well. Yes, we give thanks well. Shimarando resete rimande. E le mondo rose brenistaya. Shabrada mantarabashte. Oh, we worship, we worship you. Le brodu se brenti kabala. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you, Lord. Worship your holy name, worship your holy name, worship your holy name. We come against every lying heart symptom in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. For restoring the heart, restoring the vessels, restoring the valves. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. We'd like to hear testimonies anytime from you all if you are receiving. And it would be great to hear. Thank God for what he's doing. As usual, we'll... Go to a prayer, this time in the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. And uh, this is supposed to be Paul's style of writing. And it's one way you can tell it is him that wrote it. So notice the 20th verse. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God for such prayers. They are very uh, great in their depth and also in their eternal perspective. And so we thank God for such prayers. And they give us a mm, clearer insight into how God sees things and let him work. Sometimes if you imagine why God gave us everything in Christ... It was so that we could not really, in quote, help him. That we could just receive what he did in Christ before time began. He really doesn't need our help. He needs us to obey. He needs us to just do what he wants us to do. Amen? It's not that we have to, in quote, help God. But we just need to do what he wants us to do. And so, uh, as we grow and mature, we realize that there can be works that you just do from the flesh and others that you do prompted by God and His Spirit. And it takes time to separate the two. Hallelujah. Some things are just done in the strength of the man on the outside with a view to doing some good, and that's all fine. But as you mature, we are supposed to realize more and more that there are some things that originate in God, and that's His will. And we should choose to do His will and so forth. Praise God. These kind of prayers help in that. And so let's uh, see that in Canada also. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Shashwata Vada Udambadikaya Rakta the Mulaka Kuri Hindige Dodda Kurubanagiruva Namma Kattanada Yesuvanu Sattavaru Laginda Bara Madi the Shanti Dayakanada Devaru. Nimmanu Sakala Sakkare Vadali, Athana Chittavanu Maduante, Paripurna Madali, Tana Drushkeli, Mechikeada, Adanu Yesu, Kristana Mulaka Nimali Nadisali, Yuga Yugantara Vadali, Athanige Mahime Untagali, Amen. So he has to take the glory, he has to take the praise, and that is why he has made us, so to speak, uh, vessels of clay so that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of us. There's a purpose in making us in these vessels of clay, so that we don't take the glory that is due to Him. 
Hallelujah. And so uh, we need to remember that there's a part of us that is entirely God. That's our spirit man, just as he is. Hallelujah. And with that, we contact God. And so we want to lean in and receive clarity and instruction from that part in spite of everything else. Micah 6 is a familiar chapter and the 8th verse. He says some things there. Uh, just prior to that, you'd see there were uh, sacrifices mentioned, including the child, the firstborn, given as a sacrifice. Maybe in those days it was common. Maybe uh, what God told Abraham to do, offer his son, was maybe one of those practices in the pagan world and so forth. But instead of all of that kind of sacrifice, he says in verse 8, He has showed you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. So there are requirements. And uh, that's what we want to realize, that in the new covenant, some requirements are still there, which have sort of carried on from the beginning. What does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen? So he says, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Those were all ideas that they had to sort of atone for their failure and sin, offer even their child and all that. So he said, no, this is what God wants. He's saying very plainly, this is what God requires. To do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Amen. Thank God that it's written that plainly. Amen. So if we can stay in those parameters and boundaries, it would do well before God. Amen. Let's see if we can hear uh, verse 8 also in Canada. Manushyane, Uttamavada, Adanu Ninage, Atanu Tilisidane, Haudu, Nyaya Vanu, Maduvadu, Karune, and Nu Priti Maduvadu, Nina Devara, Sangada Vinayavagi, Nadakuluvadu, Idane Horatu, Katanu, Inenu, Ninda Kirutane. Glory to God. So we have, therefore, the capacity to do these things. Otherwise, it would not be required of God for God to create someone and expect something out of them which he knows they cannot do would be unjust and would cause God not to be who he is. So if he says, this is what I require, O oh man, then man that has his life and nature much more in the new covenant, notice, can do the right thing, walk in justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. So anytime you see requirements like that, you should say, I can do this. Hallelujah. God made me like that. Otherwise, he would not ask me to do such a thing. And so uh, we need to begin to see it that way, knowing that we have that nature, we have that ability, and that he will not ask us to do anything that we cannot do but of course, if you look at it naturally, it may look incredible. Uh, but we need to look further than that, deeper than that, and see our true nature. And that nature is His nature. Amen. Praise God. So let's observe along those lines that the new covenant gives us, in quote, very practical things to do, requirements. And so we look forward to doing that and, and walk humbly before our God. Romans, the 13th chapter says in the 8th verse, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. So we have a debt that is never paid, and that is to love one another. And that Jesus came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Hallelujah. And all of the law is fulfilled in this 
statement that you love the Lord your God with all that you are and that you love your neighbor as yourself. That everything is fulfilled in this and that standing debt is there for us to pay. That we should make sure we pay all other debts. But this debt is still unpaid. Hallelujah. All the law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. So we're not like in quote lawless people. In fact, we walk in a higher law, and that law is so sublime and so uh, subtle and glorious in God that you will never think of harming your neighbor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So you don't need to give that person, that kind of person, any kind of law because he is, first of all, thinking of how he won't harm his neighbor. Glory to God. That is on his heart. That is what he's uh, wanting to do. He's not wanting to do this sacrifice and that sacrifice. He's rather wanting to love the other as himself. Amen. So that is a standing debt that we have. And we must believe God and prayerfully consider paying that debt again and again. Hallelujah. And that statement is there all over scripture. We can see also Galatians 5.14. And it says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. So that's why we're studying it, because maybe some folks uh, think that because we're in the New Testament, we can just walk around happily and not be bothered about anything. Well, we have a debt that has to be paid. Amen? And that's that we love our neighbor as ourself. If you look at it naturally, it looks incredible. Why should I bother like that? Treat them like myself? Oh, no. But all that is in the flesh. But in the spirit, we have the nature of God who is love. Amen? And who gave his life when we were, in quote, enemies when we had no clue who he was. He had already gone ahead and laid his life for us and paid the price, the ransom for us and has given us that very nature inside, in our spirit. But if you just remain in your mentality and in your external senses, this may look incredible and even just grotesque and painful. Hallelujah. But thank God... God would never ask us to do something that we cannot. Hallelujah. And so we have the love and we have the nature of God on the inside of us. And we can do what he said we can do. And that's why we believe that he will perfect and work in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. By his intercession and his prayer at the right hand of the throne. That we will begin to bring forth these things, working that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, in the blood of the new covenant, and so forth. God will help us, amen? That commandment is there out of a pure heart that we will walk in faith and love, amen? Thank God that we can do these things, hallelujah. Let's hear the 13th chapter of Romans and verse 8. Praise God. All these laws about thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, steal, bear false witness, covet, etc. They cannot actually work or they are not required if you love your neighbor. You will not think at all of doing any such evil against them. Amen. Just to even think about it. So verse 10 says, love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Hallelujah. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Romans 13, 10. Let's hear verse 10 also in Canada. 
ಪ್ರೀತಿಯು ತನ್ನ ನೆರೆಯವನಿಗೆ ಯಾವ ಕೇಡನ್ನೂ ಮಾಡುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಆದ ಕಾರಣ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದಲೇ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಪ್ರಮಾಣವು ನೆರವೇರುತ್ತದೆ generally forcing our tongue which is the rudder of our life the control system of our life to do some things to say things to respond to produce words and so forth so there's going to be pressure on the tongue to choose properly to not say certain things to say certain things and you'll realize more and more that silence is golden all of those things hey man a man of few words will find fewer things to repent about hallelujah and so there is all of that contained there in that good work department in loving the lord loving his people and loving your enemy even praise god you find that also in job who was put through a lot of tests who suddenly got into a very pressure filled situation when the hedge of protection around his life was broken by his own fear based thinking and so by the 6th chapter verse 1 says but job answered and said job answered and said oh that my grief were thoroughly weighed and my calamity laid in the balance together he is now beginning to you know consider his grief all kinds of things like that and so we see complaints have begun and he started saying things and then by verse 23 he says deliver me from the enemy's hand hmm. or redeem me from the hand of the mighty teach me and i will hold my tongue cause me to understand wherein i have erred amen so we hear here a cry teach me lord so that i can hold my tongue show me where i missed it i know that my tongue has done some things has said some things so teach me that i will understand and he goes on in 25 how forcible are right words but what does your arguing reprove so to choose properly what to say we require instruction and that's why one good reason why we read our bibles one good reason why we go to church believing that these things are possible amen the instruction in the usage of the tongue which is the most spoken about thing in the bible hallelujah just chapter wise if you look at it uh, the tongue is been one of the main subjects because god knows that uh, the tongue is a very special organ given to us of course parrots have tongues and they can just repeat things but they don't have a choice uh, to say things amen even angels don't choose what they want to say they just have to say what they were told to say isn't that interesting the one who stood out and said i will do what i want he was kicked away kicked out from that place and he became the enemy of god so this tongue of ours and the ability to say what you want to say is a big freedom amen but it also means it's a big responsibility hallelujah so uh, we will open up ourselves to be trained by god to learn to study how to use the tongue amen because there's so much uh, to be said but saying the right thing from the spirit is more important so we are called to study the word of god hallelujah second timothy 2 verse 15 says pray and god will give you knowledge no this is one thing that you don't pray for and get it immediately amen you can pray for knowledge but you have to study hallelujah you have to crack open your bible and you have to pour over verses prayerfully and study good old fashion back to school study amen study to show yourself approved unto god this is how god approves by your time spent studying the word hallelujah and this applies to all of us that read the bible 
a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So here we have time given as Bible study. And so it may sound boring, humdrum, but we're trying to impress the fact on everyone that the study of the word is very important in God's eyes. This is well-pleasing in His sight. So we want to study, and this should not be your only study. Hallelujah. This should be one of the studies you're doing, but you are also studying your Bible. You are studying various things. Hallelujah. Because if God is going to approve you and put a stamp on your life, that's serious. Amen. Hallelujah. You're looking for approval from God. And so you need to be uh, so clear in your study that you are not forcing things, uh, but receiving from the instruction of the Spirit of God and not bending the Scripture to suit your pet purposes, but you are listening to what the Spirit is saying, that you are following the guidance of basic things that are established as the truth, and then weighing and dividing and dissecting the Word of God properly. And that is what God would like to approve. So He doesn't approve of things that are not properly divided, properly balanced, and that cause error and cause people to totally miss God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is a big deal. And that's why we try to make it just about the Word itself. We spend time reading it just quietly, slowly, as much as possible. So that you can also say, oh, that's how you read your Bible. You just read your Bible and pray over it and think upon it. So you study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Otherwise, you could actually be embarrassed. You could eventually say, my mouth said things. My lips said the wrong thing. Show me my error. That would be humble. Amen. That would be a humble thing to eventually stand in front of people and say, you know what? I taught some wrong stuff. Forgive me. Amen. But that's called walking humbly. And so not too many people will be famous for that. And sometimes as a result of that, uh, people lose their trust in you and all of that. So you can see it's better to study it properly before you say it even. Because uh, a lot is hanging in there, especially if you have become, in quote, famous. And then people find out you were saying things that were not accurate. Amen. So not too many people are going to say, oh, so humble. He has confessed that he taught error, that he taught things that were wrong. There are not too many people who are going to say that. They're going to say, ah, we believed you. There you go. Amen. Because not too many people are thinking about these kind of thoughts that we are talking about. Amen. To love mercy, to walk humbly before God. It's right to be able to say, you know, I used to believe this and that, but it's not true. Hallelujah. Amen. So the heart of the matter is God's approval. Praise God. So you don't hear too many people say, you know, I was wrong. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because not too many people are diligent about studying these things completely for themselves. Amen. So glory to God. You can learn and learn and learn. There's no end to learning. Praise God. We're supposed to keep doing this. This is what God wants out of our lives. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. Let's hear 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 also in Canada. Praise God. And so as we learn these things, we will be understanding that, you know, sometimes you just have to hush up and don't say much. You have to know when to shut up. Hallelujah. And when to speak. Praise God. Notice the 39th Psalm, verse 1, to the chief musician, to Jeduthun, a Psalm of David. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked are before me. Amen. So this man understood that 
when you are in the presence of people who may not be entirely straight, but rather wicked, twisted, you may have to be careful, especially with your tongue. Amen? Yes, it's important to be careful, quick to hear at those moments, and very slow to speak. Otherwise, the enemy can force words into you by bombarding your mind with suggestions. And the pressure can be high. Say it, say it, say it. Hallelujah. And then you will end up saying things that you will say, I wish I had never said that. Hallelujah. I wish I had never, ever spoken like that. Look at verse 3. My heart was hot within me. Hot. You know, you can feel the temperature rising. While I was meditating, the fire burned. Then spoke I with my tongue. Hallelujah. So all these pressures are there from the Spirit of God and from other thoughts and the enemy around. And you need to ponder properly before you speak. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All of this is involved. And so uh, there's work there. It's a lot of work. Hallelujah. And for David to know that at that stage, he was a great man. Hallelujah. So we need to take some message from him, learn that, and be careful. Amen? Let's hear Psalm 39, verse 1 and verse 3. Nanna naligay in the papamada the hage, nanna margagalanu kapadi kulluven indu, dushtanu nanna munde, iruaga, nanna baige, kadivana itu kulluven indu, heli denu. Amen. Nanna rudaya the li santapa kitu, nanu yochisutiru ali benkiu ritu, nanna naligay in the mata di denu. So the enemy can put pressure on your mind, put thoughts into you, say it, say it, say it, and that you cannot settle until you've said it. And after, ah, I have said it. Meanwhile, you could have hurt people that you love, but you were under pressure and you just got into that habit and you just said it, and then the damage has been done. Hallelujah. The fire has been lit by the tongue. Amen. A whole forest can be lit by one match. That is how the tongue is likened in James chapter 3. So you can see there's a lot of work to be done. Amen. A lot of pondering, making sure we have a bridle there over our tongue. Notice the, how James has taken that thought also and, you know, reminded us about a bridle, that there's a way to bridle the tongue. Hallelujah. Especially when the voice of the enemy is speaking loud and trying to fill your head with thoughts. Amen. So that you speak something that uh, will cause trouble. Amen. And uh, we don't want to be in that situation. Hallelujah. We want to be exempted from those kind of things. Hallelujah. Otherwise the enemy will use our tongue to damage people in quote whom we love. Or whom we're supposed to love. Amen. So you can see these prayers are so vital. Uh, this meditation is important. And that uh, we do the right thing. Because we have a standing debt to owe no man anything but love. So we begin to fill our words purposely with things that will produce life. Amen. Rather than destroy lives. Rather than tear down lives. Hallelujah. Uh, words are not just meant for us to communicate, which is one reason why people are doing a lot of communicating nowadays. You know, there's all kinds of media and all kinds of opinions are being expressed. Everybody's saying whatever they want to say. But that's not the reason uh, why the tongue was given uh, just to talk and talk. Amen. But rather to take things from the spirit into the natural and affect lives around us. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's the way God, who is the chief and the original speaker, planned it to be. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah 55. This is an interesting thought. Keep thinking along those lines. Notice chapter 55. Verse 10, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, 
that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, that all positive production, growth, etc., so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So he chooses words to send something out there. Amen. And the outcome is growth, harvest, increase, etc. He's not just talking to be talking. He's not just communicating. Praise God. But he's putting things into words as containers to go and produce what he wants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we need to start thinking more consciously about did my words have the power in them to produce love, to produce healing, to produce wholeness, to produce soundness, or did my words just produce death and destruction? Amen. Did the enemy use my tongue? That's wrong, isn't it? For somebody to use your tongue. Hallelujah. And that's his chief purpose. Praise God. Speaking to Job's wife. Praise God. He said, on and on and on until she opened her mouth and said, curse God and die. Amen. Because if you study that story, you will notice he first said to God that if you allowed that hedge to go away, that that man will curse you to your face. Hallelujah. That you have put a hedge around him, about his house, about all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands. His possessions are increased in the land. But now put forth your hand. In quote, touch all that he has. He will curse you to your face. Amen. So this is what he has been telling Job's wife. What he started to tell God also. Praise God. And here very few people realize the context of verse 11. If you go and check translations, most of them will tell you, you know, that uh, God is the one who put his hand and touched Job and destroyed Job's life and so forth. But actually it was Job himself who brought that upon himself. Amen. And so it's very interesting. Not too many people are interested in knowing that. Is it really God that allowed it or did God do it? So there's a permission and there's an actual cause. He can permit things to happen, but it's because we permitted them. Amen. Either through our ignorance or through our being uh, hot in our heart and just having to say things and do things, just not even giving the Spirit any time. Amen. So there's a lot to learn. And eventually, uh, this is how Job executed, I mean, the devil executed uh, vengeance and destruction into Job's life. Hallelujah. It eventually came into the weaker link at that point, Job's wife, and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Amen. So he's looking for minds that will listen and then finally speak it out. He just keep bombarding you with it until it comes out of your mouth. But praise God, you can ask God for mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let's see Job chapter 1 and observe there verse 10. Hallelujah. So the person closest to you can be used by the enemy to fill your mind with thoughts because he knows they have influence in your life. So let us use our influence properly. If we are close to people, if we have their confidence, be very careful what you speak to them. Amen. Amen. Fill your words, especially with things that will build up. Hallelujah. That will minister grace. That will help them. That will produce a harvest. Just like the earth that is being filled with the rain of heaven and causing growth, harvest to come forth. Amen. We should be careful. More careful than ever before because these days are evil and the voices have increased in their fierceness. Hallelujah. Very fierce, 
hard, mean, hateful voices are speaking. Amen. And we can be forced by them to also speak like that. Amen. That's one reason why you may have to not listen to uh, certain kinds of conversation, certain kinds of language, because it's trying to enter into your uh, mouth and come out of your lips also. Praise God. And so we want to be careful. Hallelujah. Notice Job 2 and verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. Hallelujah. But he said you are speaking like one of the foolish women. Thank God he was able to tell that. If he was so low and he was so uh, broken down, he may have chosen those kind of voices too. Amen. At your low moments, you will also opt out for things that you have not really thought about. And you just release them out there. But thank God you can ask God for mercy. Amen. And maybe you can go ahead and say, I cancel the power of those words in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But it's better to study them properly, think about it properly, and begin to fill your heart with the right kinds of thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's see Job chapter 2, verse 9 also. Praise God. Now let's go on. We go further and observe that God purposefully chooses words to put things into them that will cause the desired, what he pro, pro, uh, plans and pro, uh, ponders in his heart, his purposes to come to pass. Amen. So I have to start thinking like that. Lord, help me as I pray to choose words and fill them with what I want from God's will for my life and for other people who are around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's go forward and read some more out of uh, the book of Psalms. Another man who was again pushed and tempted was uh, uh, our great leader of the Old Testament, Moses. Hallelujah. And uh, the people really disturbed this man. And the Bible says in verse 33, because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke rashly with his lips. Hallelujah. That is uh, New King James, is the 2000 King James. Spoke rashly. Amen. Notice that. Verse 31, and that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. Phineas had executed judgment. Verse 32, they angered him also at the waters of strife. See? So anger the man properly at the strife, use of words, and then it goes ill, that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. So this thing is not even his fault. It's actually their fault. They are the ones who have the problems and the strife. But when he began to uh, listen and began to think like them, it, it got into him also. Praise God. So it's often the best thing to not even tolerate strife, to not get involved with all of that. Because when you come into that place and you begin to harmonize with them, guess what's going to happen? You're going to speak some things also. Hallelujah. Because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke rashly with his lips. Hallelujah. So uh, try not to get involved. Uh, there's a verse in the Proverbs that says, Taking some uh, argument that doesn't belong to you is like taking a dog by his ears when it is involved in a fight. You're going to get bitten badly. Amen. So you need to realize sometimes you just have to ignore what's going on. All those words that are spoken. Instead, speak peace there in Jesus' name. Bind every demonic thing in Jesus' name. Plead the blood there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They angered him also at the waters of strife, strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke rashly with his lips. Amen. He's a great man. He brought people out of captivity, at least two million of them. But at some point they got to him. <laughs> Ooh, glory. 
they got to him. They eventually got him to think like that and speak like that. And of course, it affected him also. Amen. And we have that testimony written here today. Amen. Notice there. And so let's read that also. Uh, verse 32 and 33 of Psalm 106. Avaru vivada da nirina badiyalli atanige kopavan nebisidaru. Avara nimitta moshege kedu bantu. Avaru devaratman annu kena kidaru. Adadarinda avanu buddhigina teinda matanadidanu. So the Lord takes him as a result of that to Mount Nebo and shows him all the land in Deuteronomy 34. And the fourth verse he says, The Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. He was supposed to go in with the people. Amen. But because of his leadership and expectation, requirement. Notice there's a requirement, there's an expectation as you rise up in God. It was more of a problem for him than just an ordinary person. He said, you can see all this land. It's supposed to be for your descendants, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so forth, but you're not going inside. Amen. Very sad. You can feel it. Hallelujah. So he didn't go in there. And so when he started entertaining those ideas, they were fighting and striving about things and tempting God, and it got to him. And finally he started talking like that. He started acting like that also. And guess what? The price he paid was different. Hallelujah. So especially if you are uh, rising up and beginning to influence people with your lips, you should be more careful than others. Hallelujah. You should be a little more careful in the use of the tongue. God help us. God help us. Hallelujah. Oh, we need help. We need so much mercy. We need to love mercy. We need to love mercy. Hallelujah. We need to walk humbly before God and say, I'm sorry. I said the wrong thing. Help me. Hallelujah. Pray for me. And so on. Glory to God. All right. Let's hear. I think we did uh, Psalm 110. Let's do Deuteronomy 34 also and notice uh, the fourth verse in Canada. Praise God. So uh, we don't want to lose these lessons. We want to gain from these lessons from these experiences that others have gone through so that we in the New Testament can receive what Christ has done for us. Amen. And uh, he has blessed us with every blessing in heavenly places. All that he has, he has given to us. And he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Hallelujah. He has come with everything he has and given it to us and said, I even give you common sense, which is not so common. Hallelujah. Study the word and get the sense out of it so that your words can be purposefully filled with things that produce life, health, grace, mercy, goodness. Hallelujah. Instead of tearing down and cutting people uh, who God created in his image. Praise God. God will help us, especially now in these last days. All right. Now let's begin to examine more thoughts as we build ourselves on these ideas God will help us there is more required of us in the new covenant how many of you realize that we have a better covenant we are actually born again we have the nature of God we have the same way of thinking given to us in scripture and it's already in our spirit that love nature and thinking is inside Hallelujah. And to whom much is given, much is expected. Praise God. Notice uh, the, hundred, the 20th Psalm, Psalm chapter 20. Praise God. The Psalms are wonderful. Verse 5 says, We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. 
the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Praise God. The Lord God fulfills. Hallelujah. Your petitions. Amen. Notice there's a lot of rejoicing before that. And banners of victory. Amen. And then fulfillment of our petitions. God is a God who would like to fulfill our petitions. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm not wasting my time praying, petitioning him. God would like to fulfill it. Amen. Notice that God wants to fulfill our petitions. I read from the Amplified. We will shout in triumph at your salvation. Get really excited about his salvation. If it's the only thing you have, that you are saved, that your spirit is just as he is, you can shout from now till heaven. That you are born again, you're on your way to heaven. We will shout in triumph at your salvation. And victory. Did you know that victory is guaranteed to the believer? That you will win always in every place? That's an amazing work he has done for us in Christ Jesus. That you're guaranteed the victory. Always. And so you can shout. This was a shout that came from the book of Psalms. And we are the actual recipients of this. Amazing. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Hallelujah. That name is what gave us salvation. That name is where we receive the new life. That name is where we have the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord fulfills in the name. Whatever you ask the Father in His name, He will give it to you. Praise God. He will fulfill. And so we rejoice about all of this wonderful stuff that He has given us in this new covenant. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Notice verse 7. Some trust in and boast of chariots. I'm reading the Amplified now. Some of horses. But we will trust and boast of the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, sometimes you are familiar with some way of thinking and you would like to see, does God really mean that? Is that really what it meant? And that's wonderful. Amen. And we should check it. So if you read that in the King James, it says, we will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Hallelujah. The banner there is not a new movie coming up, but the victory that you're going to have. Hallelujah. Amen. We will set up our banners. Notice, the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Praise God. Notice verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. And if you check, actually it's supposed to be remember, recall, you know, uh, bring it back to your thinking. So in the midst of all of the challenges, you know, when you are forced to trust in this and trust in that, you have to start remembering that the Lord brought you out before in the name. Hallelujah. In the promises of God, He Himself answered your petitions. Praise God. We may have to remember what that name did for us before. Hallelujah. There's a lot about the memory. Even that communion meal is bringing to remembrance what Jesus has already done for us. Hallelujah. So uh, the memory is important. So keep a, maybe a small note in your diary now and then of what the Lord did for you. Remember what He did. Hallelujah. And that's wonderful. So that you can give the glory to that name. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to be standing upright. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the mighty name of Jesus. Remember salvation and shout about it. Make a big deal about the fact that you're saved. Hallelujah. Amen. I know people who have a, a birthday celebration when they uh, remember their salvation day. Amen. And that's great. Hallelujah. But don't forget the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Begin to shout about it. The God who fulfills our petitions. Amen. He's a God who works in us. Both to will and do his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. So you could say that petitions were desires first of all inside you. 
Amen. So he fulfills your desires. He says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. And so in the middle of all of that confusion that's out there, remember, God will fulfill. God will work things out. And so begin to rejoice about it. Remember the name. Remember the strength in that name. Remember that that name is your strong tower. That you run into it and you're saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you can just shout the name every now and then. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't just wait for a crusade. Don't just wait for a meeting. Shout anytime you get a chance. Just shout on that name. Call on that name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful name of Jesus. Some trust in chariots, others in horses. But we will trust and remember the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Have memories already planned in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Notice here as we proceed that we are paying off this debt. We are planning to pay off the debt that we owe. Hallelujah. Amen. And observe here in the 91st Psalm, verse 14, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Amen. You see how it goes together? And when you start rejoicing and thinking about that name, that you just called on that name and everything changed in your life, you became a believer, your whole life began to take a U-turn, you begin to fall in love with him all over again. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Sometimes there's trouble. But I will deliver him and honor him. Hallelujah. I will deliver him and honor him. Hallelujah. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. All of this is because... You began to think and put your mind and your memory on him, his name, and began to shout about it, give thanks. And he said, you are calling upon him, and he will answer and be with you in that trouble. There can be times of trouble. There can be an evil day, but he will deliver you and honor you. Ha, ha, ha. He will satisfy you with long life. He will show you his salvation. Amen. Notice that he calls it his salvation. You know, various people know what to do and sometimes they do it. But God has a style of saving and he delivers to the uttermost. Amen. Hallelujah. He delivers to the uttermost. There won't be even the smell of smoke when he brings you out of that fire. People look at you and say, are you the guy that went through all of that? Hallelujah. God knows how to bring you out. There won't even be a trace. Amen. So don't reduce your expectation, but lift it up even higher. Begin to expect more, especially when the voices of the enemy continue to barrage you in this particular time of life. Amen. That is when you can rejoice and say, Hallelujah for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah that he's done it before. He's doing it again. He will show me every aspect of his salvation. His healing, his wholeness, his soundness, his welfare, his well-being. He's nothing missing, nothing broken. He will satisfy me. He will show me. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one who said these things, not we. Amen. These are his words which he filled with his purpose and it won't return until it produces the effect. Amen. So I choose to fill my words with it and speak it out. Hallelujah. And it will go and it will produce the same effect. Hallelujah. Because I am his own, very own child. And I have his own nature, his own very nature. And I speak his word, which is spirit and life. And it is producing. And I do not have to worry about it. It will do what it has to do. Praise God. And I will continue to speak it. I'll continue to say it. And it will be a testimony. Praise God. Sometimes you just have to keep at it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to make mistakes. We can always say, the blood of the new covenant speaks for us. We can continue to ask for mercy. Hallelujah. But then, isn't it better to prepare well in advance and then speak things? 
making sure that you don't flop again. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the 148th Psalm also. Or rather, 47th Psalm. No, 40, 145th Psalm. My notes are a little bit small. Amen. Notice there, verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Hallelujah. Amen. So there is one that fears him. And by now you've understood it means those who trust in his mercy. Amen. Those who fear him are those who trust in his mercy, in his goodness. Praise God. Hallelujah. And based on that, he will fulfill our desire. He will hear our cry and save us. One day you called on his name and he saved you. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I was discussing with uh, Sonny the other day how uh, I was at a public terminal kind of place. And usually when I'm in public, I try to become conscious that I'm having an opportunity to pray for them all. Amen. In a traffic queue or wherever it is, there are multitudes of people. I'll just start praying for them. So I started praying, walking up and down, praying. And then my attention was drawn to a new stand where they were selling books and all of that. And I just thought I'd go there and start something. Praise God. So I said, how's business going? How's the sales doing? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Just, just looking for an opportunity. And then next thing you know, uh, this person was reading a Bible. I said, oh, praise the Lord. You're reading the Bible. He said, yeah, I always liked Isho, it seems. I said, okay. So why don't you just check with me, turn, 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 to Romans 10. And, uh, you know, I just read those verses. And the person prayed it with me. And next thing you know, they were saved. Hallelujah. Now what happened was, there was a delay in the transportation for that much time. Amen. And we were very sure, like in the Gaza trip that you know, the Ethiopian eunuch was making, that the minute he opened his Bible, God sent one man his way. Hallelujah. And I just felt that God would have set it all up like that, flight, delay, whatever, this, that, hang out with the weather, etc., etc., until you have ministered to this person. Hallelujah. And they have accepted. And then it's like, okay, now let's go on. Praise God. That's how much he loves to see salvation. That's how much heaven gets excited over one person. One, just one person. Hallelujah. Amen. So he is like that God. He hears their cry. I don't know. I just liked Esho, it seems. Yeah. We know why you like Esho. Because uh, God knew that. Hallelujah. And you had to finish the deal and get saved. Praise God. And the, the person said, you know what? I think God sent you just for me to this place. And I'm like, you bet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him or trust in his mercy. He also will hear their cry. There are some cries that are happening from inside that are not yet even made public. Who is this that the scripture is talking about? Is this the prophet himself or somebody else? Amen. He's reading and he has this cry. Who's this? Who's this? And he began and preached Christ unto him. Hallelujah. Starting in that same Isaiah 53, he now leads him to the Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And all that catching away was for this one person. Heaven just released all kinds of goodness and mercy just to go and lead one person to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Amazing stuff. This is how he thinks. And so... The closer we get to his thinking, the better. Amen. Glory to God. All right, let's hear Psalm uh, 145, verse 19. Tanage bayapaduvara ishtavanu kiri suttane, avara moreyanu kiri avaranu rakshi suttane. Praise God. Verse 20 says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him, all the wicked will he destroy. So there is a point at which he cannot help some people. And so their own choices trap them. 
But other than that, he's preserving all them that love him, that hope in his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. So let's begin to set our love upon him, our affection on him evermore, especially in these days. Amen. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, if you're born again, if you're truly saved, what should you do? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. This is the answer to all of your desire. Okay, now I'm born again. What should I do? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Amen. When you are boiled and distilled completely, the last part that is left must be, I have one desire, and that is you. And at the right hand, that's where my heart is. Amen. We should be able to melt everything down to, what is the main thing that this guy is all about? Amen. If you're born again, this should be your main thing. You set your affection on things that are above, not on things on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he set his love upon me, therefore, Psalm 91. Amen. Therefore, you see, so there is a new covenant thinking there, which has not changed. It was the same even in the old. Amen. Hallelujah. God's response was, because he set his love upon me, therefore. Praise God. Amen. So this has been him all the time. He is that kind of person. He wants it all. Praise God. And what a privilege that you actually are desired by him. Ha ha ha. That this holy one who has no lack, who has everything, who created everything, actually wants your affection. Amen. And he gave you words. And he gave you a heart that you can tell him things. You can say, Lord, as my tongue is speaking, my heart actually believes. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. I have the same spirit. I desire you more than anything else. And then the rest of you will begin to go in that direction. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because be frank about it. Your spirit is born again. You are just as he is. Every other thinking is actually alien. You are now born from above. Hallelujah. This is actually who you are. You are a citizen of heaven. God is your father. The other thoughts are not God. That's a fallen earth, fallen man. Amen. And we are thinking, studying, pondering, meditating on his thoughts so that we can begin to speak that and produce those effects. And it won't return void. God programmed the word like that. It will produce. It will prosper in the thing for which it was sent. So that's why we're studying so that we can say, I have decided to set my affection on things that are above, not on things on the earth. Hallelujah. I have desired you above all else. And you're not lying. Hallelujah. One of the first times I heard God speak to my heart was, Walking down the road from S.P.S. Kefi. I had just gotten saved and I was looking at the sun setting and all the flowers and trees. Then I said, wow, Lord, this is beautiful. You must be beautiful. And I heard this voice say, are you flattering me? And I thought about it for some time. Could that be God? Does he talk like that? And then I saw eventually that he said, they flatter me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. Amen. So uh, when you're born again, you can actually be sure you're not flattering him. <laughs> because your spirit, the real you, is from above. It has his own nature. Hallelujah. And so when you begin to talk highly about him and how you love him, you're not lying. Praise God. That is who you are. You were born from him. From him you came. And so when you thank him and praise him, you're not a fake. Your thoughts will come. You know, enemies' thoughts will come. Why are you saying all that? Really? 
Can you say that? Who are you anyway? Blah, blah, blah. I know what you did. I know how you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say no. I'm born again. Ha, ha, ha. And that's my father. And you have no business here. Amen. Amen. I'm just thanking him because he's worthy. He gave birth to me. I am his true child. Jesus paid for it. He chose me. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Sometimes people say, oh, you were just born, but I was chosen, this and that. Well, you were born and you were chosen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Mm, glory to God. Of course, our flesh wants to feel something. We want to feel it in the natural. We want that emotion. We want the fuzzies. We want, you know, all that goes with it. But these things are more spiritual. That we were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. And we were chosen to be separate and without blame before Him in love. Amen. You could say in God. You were chosen in God because God is love. Hallelujah. So God loved you and chose you before you could even think. Because our thoughts are now the subject. You see, our thoughts can go with the enemy, can go with the world, can go with other emotions, or it can go with God. So God said, I have to do this while they cannot even think. <laughs> Amen. But of course, he doesn't force anybody. He finishes it all, and he knows our choice, and he says, if I came to you and said, I love you, I give myself for you, would you choose me? And he knows those who will say yes. And you said yes, and you chose him. And he gave you all of these wonderful, wonderful thoughts. And he said, I am your father. Praise God. You are my child, and I chose you. Before time began. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. I don't know about you, but this gives me the warm fuzzies. You can lose it and just fall in love with these verses. Amen. There's no harm with that. But be careful when you fall in love with what people say. Amen. They may not mean it. They may just play around. Hallelujah. But if God, who never changes, the pure, loving, heavenly Father says, I have loved you before time began. I chose you before time began. And I spent it all on you, my own life. You can say, whoa, glory to God. Glory to God. Before you were born, before you were created. Thank you, Jesus. So you can read these lines and just... Get the warm fuzzies. Be full of that. Enjoy those emotions. So that when man treats you any other way, you don't have to worry. Yeah. Amen. You don't expect man to give that to you. Hallelujah. You expect God to fulfill his word. So your tanks are full. Hallelujah. Your tanks of the emotional needs are full. You are the beloved. You are enjoying that foreknowledge. You are enjoying that choice that he had for you before you did anything right or wrong. And you say, I accept it. And I dwell in it. And I think upon it. And therefore, I put my thoughts and my affections on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you are so full of those things that now when you speak, it's different. Amen. Amen. You're not flattering anybody or yourself. You are saying the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Quite a bit there. Let's read Colossians, the third chapter, verse 1 to 2. I don't think we... Let's do Psalm 91, 14 and 15, all the way to 16. 
ಅವನು ತನ್ನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯನ್ನು ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಇಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಆದದರಿಂದ ಅವನನ್ನು ತಪ್ಪಿಸುವೆನು ಅವನು ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರನ್ನು ತಿಳಿದಿರುವುದರಿಂದ ಅವನನ್ನು ಉನ್ನತದಲ್ಲಿಡುವೆನು ಅವನು ನನ್ನನ್ನು ಕರೆಯುವನು ನಾನು ಅವನಿಗೆ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಡುವೆನು ಇಕ್ಕಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಅವನ ಸಂಗಡ ಇದ್ದು ಅವನನ್ನು ತಪ್ಪಿಸಿ ಕನಪಡಿಸುವೆನು ದೀರ್ಘಾಯುಷ್ಯದಿಂದ ಅವನನ್ನು ತೃಪ್ತಿಪಡಿಸಿ ನನ್ನ ರಕ್ಷಣೆಯನ್ನು ಅವನಿಗೆ ತೋರಿಸುವೆನು Praise God. Let's read in Philippians now from the 7th verse. But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Ha ha. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. All that was for us. Finding himself in in the likeness of a man he humbled himself he became obedient unto death the death of the cross which was the worst mockery anybody could have you were hung naked in front of everybody naked without a stitch of clothing you are hung there and for the jew apparently this was the worst thing you could do the jew was very concerned about covering himself you can see vestiges of that in the middle east all this covering up so to make a jew man uncover and hang there was terrible so being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross which was for criminals of the lowest level what was all that for to purchase us to have us back this love is beyond comprehension but we can think about it and experience it wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name hallelujah, hallelujah. glory to god that's why he has that name and he did not need that name that name was for us for us to be saved for us to use that name to go and live in that name to win in that name as a banner he gave us that name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven things in earth and things under the earth that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father any time someone calls on that name and says jesus with all of their heart the father gets glory hallelujah amen thank you jesus now he says Wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure amen god is at work in us we have to take that which he has worked in us and let it be seen on the outside amen that requires trusting in his mercy amen respecting his word and that will be for his pleasure verse 14 do all things without murmurings and disputings no strife that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world hallelujah oh praise god if you read that from the tpt it has an interesting way of saying it and i'd say it's a good one let's go to tpt as i read that glory to god get as many versions as you can uh, as long as it does not veer from the truth praise god hallelujah amen and i'm going to be reading from there verse uh, 12 my beloved ones just like you've always listened to everything i've taught you in the past I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions as though I were right there with you. 
See, so this will handle all this business of uh, there was nobody who came and saw me. And so I just did whatever I wanted. Amen? No, he's saying that he's there. By this word, you have somebody watching you right there. It's a different book. It's not just like any other book. It's alive. It's as though the person is there himself. Following my instructions as though I were right there with you. Now you must continue to make this new life fully manifested. Fully manifested. As you live in the holy awe of God. Which brings you trembling into his presence. Eventually it will catch up with you. You will feel things. And we go on. God will continually revitalize you. Implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Hallelujah. Notice, live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. Hallelujah. For then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture. For you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe. Hallelujah. It's a brutal time we're living in. The culture is brutal. People get fired. People get killed. I mean, the news is terrible. I, it comes to my phone, and I've noticed the random evil news that's just out there every single day. What you cannot even imagine is what's happening out there. Why? The devil knows he has a short time. So he's wreaking maximum havoc. He's destroying lives. Random killings, destruction, reducing mankind to nothing. God's favorite that he died for is being defaced again and again and devalued and de dehumanized. Amen. Brutal. We're living in a time that's brutal. And you can shine in the midst of all that. Living cheerfully, without complaining, without divisiveness. Hallelujah. Looking inside so that from inside you can work. What God is working inside you can be brought outside. As you study, as you meditate, as you pray. All of these things come out as a possibility. Hallelujah. And the light that they're looking for will be seen in your life. Hallelujah. Your life will truly be the light that they're looking for. Wow. Are we living in the same world? These people are going through the same things, but look at them. They're so full of joy, at peace, no strife. They're not worried. They're not anxious. What is this? Why is this like this? And they will know that their God is the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We can shine in the midst of it all. Praise God. Let's see if we can hear all of this in Canada, maybe from the 12th verse. I don't know if we go earlier than that. Yeah, let's read from 7 all the way to 9, first of all. Praise God. So here, because of that name, thank God, things are bowing. Things are bowing in your life. Things are bowing in other things out there. That name, hallelujah. The tongues are beginning to say more and more, Jesus is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Your life is affecting others, whether you know it or not. Verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as you've always obeyed. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. So there we go. There is a work inside you which will be seen outside you. Cooperate with it. Cooperate with that work. Look inside. Let it manifest outside. Hallelujah. Brother Anup talked about some pattern and tracing and the life. All of these things are scripture, real. 
that we will be what they are looking for. Because honestly, Jesus is the best that ever existed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you choose him, you become the pearl of great price. That's what everybody's looking for. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. So people will employ you just because of who you are in Christ. That life, they say, I want that in my office. I want that in my place. Amen. I just love the way this guy talks. I just love the way they behave. Praise God. Have you ever thought about that? That people may hire you just because of that. Glory to God. That this guy is not like everybody else. This guy is different. The way he talks, the way he acts. Man, I need that around. You just come and stand here as furniture in my house. I'll pay you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's see if we can hear the remaining part also. Uh, God will continue to revitalize you. Let's start from verse 12. From verse 12 all the way to uh, 16. ಹೀಗಿರುವಲ್ಲಿ <laughs> Praise God. So here I am, here you are. This is our state. We're living in a brutal world, vicious times, perverse culture, but we can shine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The 16th verse, I read, Offering them the words of eternal life. I haven't labored among you for nothing. <laughs> for your lives are the fruit of my ministry and will be my glorious boast at the unveiling of Christ. Whatever you're doing, you're going to get, in quote, paid for it, gloriously. Heaven and eternity will prove it again and again. Hallelujah. Glorious boast at the unveiling of Christ, that you were the one who spoke those words, which you were given by the Lord, and it affected those lives, and the glory goes to God. Hallelujah. But I will rejoice even if my life is poured out like a liquid offering to God over your sacrificial and surrendered lives of faith. Paul said, even if my life was poured out as a libation over the sacrifice of your faith, he said, I am excited about that. I will rejoice. I like the 18th verse. And so no matter what happens to me, you should rejoice in ecstatic celebration with me. He said he's ha happy about that. He's excited about that. But he wants them to join him in rejoicing. You, what can you do to such a person? You kill them. You pour their life on that sacrifice. They're still rejoicing. What did he see that we need to see? That even if our life is poured out, we can still rejoice because it now means something compared to God and Jesus. It's in that class. Amen. It is not a low life, creepy, seeking after dark, low living stuff. It's for high pouring out on God's sacrifice. Amen. David said, I feel like drinking the water from the well in Jerusalem, just by the gate. And his mighty men. You know, he had different levels of mighty men. There were some guys who were called the three. Amen. Among those guys, one sped off all the way to Jerusalem to that well and brought water and said, this is for you, king. He said, oh, 
this is too precious. Not just the water, but the life that was at risk to bring that water. He said, I cannot drink it. I pour it out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Some things are too pure, too holy, too high. Amen. And Paul said that's how his life was. Even if it was poured out there, it's a very high and holy thing. I'm not keeping my life back. I'm giving it. Amen. As long as it was for him and his sacrifice, take it. You can't destroy these kind of people. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't, dis- you see that mind, that thinking, that's what we are being invited to. In the middle of all the brutal, cruel, evil thoughts out there, we are the ones who can show them the true reality of the life, the nature of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see if we can read that also uh, from 16 all the way to 18 in Canada. Praise God. Hallelujah. So like those guys who are just bums, useless fellows who assembled around David and then became such mighty men, we also assembled around the son of David. Amen. And if the son said, I want this, we ran quickly to give it to him. Amen. And he took it and he said, what a sacrifice. Meanwhile, his is the supreme sacrifice. But we are also accepted. Whatever we do can be also such a wonderful thing in his eyes. If we listen to the spirit, if we listen to the word, God will rejoice with us. Say, Woo! You did it. You did it. What a good work. What an awesome work. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to just do anything from the right motive in this day. This day especially. Because the days are running out. They are evil. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe we're getting it. We're going to live it in this time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's thank him. Praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for helping us to not quit, not complain, not murmur, but rather to see it as a time to bring the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the sacrifice of praise, to offer our lives, oh, hallelujah, to study, to pray, to ponder, to be a light in this world, to have high motives that come from the throne, from our affection set on the throne. We worship you. We bless you. We thank you for bringing us into the plan. Oh, hallelujah. Leading us in the paths of righteousness that you have prepared for us before time began. We worship you today. We bless you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We call every need met, every yoke destroyed, every burden removed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, team. Glory to God. If you'd like to give, this is a great opportunity. You can bless his work. Bless the Lord with your substance, with the increase in your life. Thank you. Thank you. And he will cause you to receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It's coming back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You're blessed. I know God